Hey guys, what is up everybody and welcome to a new video. In today's video we're gonna talk about what could be better in Triumph Tiger 850 Sport. But before we start speaking about those things, I just want to mention that for many people some of those elements which I'm gonna mention are not so critical at all. Um, but I'm gonna speak from my personal perspective. Let's say me as a user, as a rider for for the places where I'm riding. I will basically judge uh, this bike based on my personal needs and also I should mention that right from the start this bike actually offers really good package so with no further ado let's speak about things which could be better in Triumph Tiger 850 Sport first thing which I'm gonna mention is electronics I don't believe that motorcycles need a lot of electronics I believe that motorcycles need uh, enough electronics to keep you safe and enough electronics to provide you with the comfort. I am surprised this bike has less electronics than 660 Sport. If you buy that bike, right from the start, it doesn't have much. Neither this bike as well. But the thing is, with uh, Tiger 660, you can install connectivity module, you can install GPS module, you can install some other features and uh, the list is actually bigger in terms of electronics than with this motorcycle. I can understand when people buy this bike and uh, they don't want anything more in terms of electronics and riding experience. It has everything you need. But the thing is, this bike actually can go for a long distance. And if you plan to go for a long distance, you might want to have all of those like bits and features which make it even more comfortable so it's okay for triumph not to include not to include uh, you know some of the features from the beginning but if they can give you opportunity uh, to install it later in case you need it that would be much much better and just to mention again to compare it to 660 660 does have this possibility to install additional connectivity modules and navigation module and GPS module. So, I mean, why that bike actually costs less, but it has more features, optional features, which you can use. This bike doesn't have USB port. Again, it's not something extraordinary, uh, but all bikes from 900 platform, they do have USB port underneath um, passenger seat. And this bike does not. And what is more surprising to me is it's not even optional. Again, if I compare this bike to 660 Sport, for 660 Sport, you have optional USB accessory, original by Triumph, which is just plug and play. I truly believe that this bike can go long distance. And I know that uh, some people actually do long journeys on those motorcycles. Again, it is 900 platform. It is very capable for road touring. You don't have cruise control. It would be a smart thing for Triumph. For some regions actually offer cruise control for this motorcycle or offer it uh, optionally for all regions. Because somewhere, let's say if you're in the States, you actually can't be on motorway, on highway, on this motorcycle. That's where this feature will be handy. Triumph don't need to install it right from the beginning, but if there is optional possibility to, to have cruise control, this bike will be perfect, I would say. Don't get me wrong, those like Michelin, Anaki tires are pretty good. The problem is engineering solution by Triumph, when they wanted to combine those tires, with, uh, with the front fender and probably there is not enough space or maybe there is too much space between them you start to hear kind of weird noise i started to look online and i saw that uh, you know other people also experience uh, the same noise maybe it's not tires themselves maybe it's combination of uh, you know tires and like space between fender and the tires and actually the way how you know tires are designed so like wind stream create this kind of noise i don't know even after more powerful motorcycles this engine is actually super relaxing super friendly and same time it has this kind of fun factor it feels like 600 cc motorcycle you have to play with gearbox 
all the time. The range where you have this like peak power is kind of limited, so it's not like from zero to 10,000 RPMs. It's somewhere in the middle, it's somewhere between like three to six, seven thousand RPM. So this like gap or window where you actually have really good playful engine. If you need accelerate and decelerate often, or if you're going through the twisties, it makes you play with the gearbox much often. I would not say it's so much uncomfortable. It actually, again, depends where you ride this motorcycle. If you're mostly commuting in the city, that actually would be okay. Because in the city, you anyway need to stop by the traffic light, you need to slow down often, like in the city, actually, no matter how big your bike is, um, you usually play with the gearbox enough. Another thing which Triumph can do better with this motorcycle is to offer, um, you know, center stand right from the beginning. So it is actually optional on this bike. But again, I will tell you that if you, if you get this bike, most probably you gonna tour on this motorcycle even from practical standpoint this is really handy feature and since this bike is positioned as adventure motorcycle why not to have it right um, if you just compare it to tracer 9 which is exactly the same price point and uh, that bike actually has it good thing that it is optional and you can actually buy it and you can actually install it and use it uh, but not so good that it's not there from, from the beginning. Might not be critical for many people. It also depends on uh, how much experience you have with motorcycles and what kind of motorcycles. Do you come from uh, like recent motorcycles which been produced in the last, let's say, five years or you're coming from older motorcycle? If you come from older motorcycles, this dash um, will be completely fine. Like really, it has everything you need. It has key information right in the middle. I just not strong believer that you have to have all this multimedia on the motorcycle. The only problem I think is navigation. And navigation through the screen is a little bit complicated because uh, this screen has four layouts. And I would not use any layout out of those rather than the first one. For each layout you are going through, you know, the joystick reactions are different. On some layouts you switch between option A and B, for example, trip A, trip B, moving left and right. On some screens, you have to do it up and down. If you used to switch the, uh, let's say, options A, B, C, left and right, they should keep it through all the screens. They already did pretty pretty good job with uh, just basic setup or layout of the screen. Uh, but they decided to go like extra mile and this extra mile made it a little bit more complicated. Rather than that, it is beautiful motorcycle. It is super practical. It is comfortable. And I would say I was expecting less from this motorcycle than it actually is. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave them in the comment section below. And uh, don't forget that I have Patreon page. So if you want to see some behind the scenes videos or you just simply want to support me, I would much appreciate that and uh, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.